Okay, let's talk a little bit about algebraic expressions. Before you manipulate algebraic expressions, it is important to understand their structure. Here are some vocabulary regarding the building blocks of an expression. <coughs> Excuse me. Algebraic expressions are made up of constants and variables. These are two words that you really, really need to know. Combined by the operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponentiation, and the taking of roots. The basic operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division are familiar to you. Exponents and roots will be discussed in the following two sections. Constants are fixed numbers, while variables are letters that represent unspecified numbers. To evaluate a given expression means to replace the variables, if there are any, with specific numbers and then to perform the indicated mathematical operations and simplify the result. Within an expression, the terms are those parts joined by addition, while the factors of a term are the individual parts of the term that are joined by multiplication. That's actually something really, really important right there. Terms are joined by addition, and I like to say by addition or subtraction. And then factors are joined by multiplication. So things that are multiplied together are called factors. In this context, it is commonly, as is commonly the case, addition also covers subtraction, which is what I was just mentioning up here. A minus B can be thought of as A plus negative B. And multiplication covers division, as A over B can be thought of as A times 1 over B. These are two really important things to know right here. The coefficient of a term is the constant factor of the term, while the remaining part of the term constitutes the variable factor. So if you were to have something like 2x, 2 would be your coefficient and x would be the variable. So you have a coefficient factor and an x, which is your variable factor. So let's evaluate this expression if x is 4 and y is negative 3. What we want to do is just replace all of these variables with these values. So we're going to have 2 times something cubed minus 3 times something minus something. Instead of those somethings, we're going to put these variable values in there. Everywhere there's an x, I'm going to put a 4. So there's an x there, and there's an x there. Everywhere there's a y, I'm going to put a negative 3. Now, we haven't discussed it yet. We're actually going to do that on the next couple of slides. But you're supposed to use the correct order of operations here. But what we want to do is start inside the parentheses. So we're going to do this part first. So what I want to do is write down everything I'm not working on. Okay? Inside here I have negative 3 minus 4. Well, negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. The next thing I want to do is to take care of the exponents. So 4 to the third power is 64. We'll have 2 times 64 minus 3 times negative 7. Okay, the next thing we want to take care of is all of the multiplication. So we'll do this and we'll do this. Remember on the previous page we said minus is the same thing as plus a negative. So if that helps you, you can go ahead and change the sign. 2 times 64 will give you 128 plus what's a negative 3 times a negative 7? That would be a positive 21. And then 128 plus 21 would give you 149. So we evaluated this expression for x is 4 and y is negative 3 and we got the result 149. On this page, we're talking about the different properties of algebraic expressions. I mainly want to focus on these bottom few. 
the commutative property is true for addition as well as multiplication. If you change the order or you switch the numbers around when you're adding, it doesn't really make any difference. For example, 2 plus 3 is the same thing as 3 plus 2, or 2 times 3 is the same thing as 3 times 2. However, that's not true for subtraction. Is 2 minus 3 equal to 3 minus 2? No way, because 2 minus 3 is negative 1, and 3 minus 2 is positive 1. Those are very different things. How about this one? Is 2 thirds the same thing as 3 halves? No, that's also not true. So the commutative property is only true for addition and for multiplication. You can also say the same thing about the associative property. That just means you can group them in different ways and you still get the same answer. For example, 2 plus 3 plus 4 is the same thing as 2 plus 3 plus 4. Here, you'd have 2 plus 7, and here you'll have 5 plus 4. You can see that 9 equals 9. So if you regroup the terms in addition, you still get the same answer. The same is true for multiplication. The identity property of addition just means what do you add to some number to get that number back? Well, the identity value is zero. For multiplication, what do you multiply by a number to get that number back again? That would be one. So the identity value would be one. For an inverse, that means what do you add to a number to get zero? That would just mean it's opposite. And for multiplication, the inverse is one over or the reciprocal of the number because a number times its reciprocal is 1. The distributive property is also really, really important in algebra. You take what's on the outside of a parenthesis and you distribute it to everything on the inside. That means a times b plus a times c. This one we will use quite a lot in algebra. Okay, the cancellation properties and the zero factor property are really, really, really important. Whenever we're talking about them in the form, you see them here. They don't really make a whole lot of sense. But when we start to use them, they're going to make a whole lot more sense. For the first one, you have this property, a equals b, and that means that a plus c equals b plus c. Well, let's look at some example of that. If you have four equals 4. You know that's a true statement, right? Well, let's say we wanted to add something to both sides of this. Let's say we wanted to add 6. Plus 6 plus 6. Do you still get the same answer? Or do you still get something that's true? Is 10 equal to 10? Yes. That just means if you add or subtract something to both sides of an equation, you still get the same answer. Same thing is true if you multiply. Let's say we have that same thing, 4 equals 4, and we want to multiply by 6. As long as you do it to both sides, you still get something that is true. Now, the next one is called the zero factor property. If you have two numbers, a, b equals 0, what do you have to multiply by a number to get 0? You need to multiply by 0, right? So to make this true, you would have to have 0 times b equals 0, right? Or a times 0 equals 0. Or you could have 0 times 0 equals 0. What this means is, if you know that this has to be true, then either a or b or both must be 0. That's what all of this stuff right here means. Okay, <clears throat> order of operations. I know you've seen this before, maybe not so much in this, in this way. Most people use, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, or PEMDAS, however you want to look at it. 
The problem with this is you have to remember one thing, or two things really. Multiplication and division are equal. Addition and subtraction are equal. So you could just as, real, just as well write P-E-D-M-S-A because these two are equal and these two are equal. So this is what that means. You work on parentheses first, then all your exponents, then all your multiplication and division, and then all your addition and subtraction. And you always work from left to right. Let's put that to use. On this one we have addition and division. So which one do we do first? We do division first. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And now 3 plus 5 is 8. But if you just worked it straight across, you would have 3 plus 10 is 13 divided by 2, which would be 6 and a half. These are not the same, right? So for all of us to get the same answer, we need to always follow the correct order of operations. How about the next one? We're supposed to get rid of our exponents. Remember, there's no parenthesis, so we keep the negative. 4 squared is 16. Okay, how about this one? Wow, that looks like loads of fun, doesn't it? Okay, let's see what's going on here. We have 6 minus 2 times the square root of 9. If you have a square root, you treat it like it's a parenthesis. And then you have an exponent. All that's in parentheses. You have parentheses here with division inside it. Here you have addition, and here we have a multiplication. If you have a fraction, like we have in this problem, what you want to do is simplify the numerator Simplify the denominator as two separate problems and then simplify the final fraction at the end. So let's work on the numerator. Let's see what we have first. We need to work on parentheses. That would be here and that would be here. That means we're going to keep the 6 and the minus because we're not going to do that yet. Well, inside the parentheses, we have another little problem. 2 square root of 9 and an exponent. Well, the square root of 9 is 3. We can go ahead and simplify this exponent too. 2 squared would be 4. We keep this a minus because there's no parentheses around it. Okay, how about the other parentheses over there? Negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify the numerator again. So inside here, we still have stuff inside the parentheses. Let's work on that. 2 times 3 is 6. Well, that minus just doesn't want to stay there, does it? Okay, still working on the numerator. We still have stuff inside the parentheses. 6 minus 2 times negative 3. Okay, we have subtraction, we have multiplication. So we're going to have 6 minus, what is 2 times negative 3? That's going to be a negative 6. Well, whenever you have minus a negative, that's the same thing as plus a positive. And 6 plus 6. Okay, so now let's go back to the denominator. In the denominator, we have multiplication and addition. We need to take care of our multiplication first. 2 times negative 1 would be a negative 2. Well, 5 plus negative 2 would actually give us a positive 3. Oh, I don't know what happened to all this. Let me fill it in really fast. That's kind of strange, isn't it? There we go. All right, we still have our 3 here and our 3 here. Now we simplify the fraction at the end. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 